Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Meg Healy. I'm Amanda Carestio. And I'm Kate Zeinard. As a creative, quality tools and inspiration are the only things you need to bring your imagination to life. Husqvarna Viking is a producer of some of the most advanced sewing machine technology in the world. Visit a retailer near you to learn more. Since this episode is dropping the day after Christmas, we thought we'd get into the day after spirit and talk about sewing loungewear. It's our, also our last episode of the year, so we're going to take some time to review our 2019 sewing success, failures, and favorites. We'll each share a little something in our Sojo segment, then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we jump in, how's everybody doing? Oh, good. You know, just get well right now. Yeah, we're recording it before. So it's kind of, you know, approaching. So, you know, when you get everything and then it's like the wrapping of everything. Uh, yes. And then that's kind of I don't know. I'm not a good I I can do well with fabric, but paper, uh, I can't get those corners very nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Drop them off. That's funny. Oh, I'm so bad. <laughs> Um, all my homemade Christmas gifts are wrapped and under the tree. Um, so I feel pretty what? good about what? it. Um, yeah. That's amazing. I just had, there was a little flurry, a little blitz there, and then I finished them. I think I was really motivated to move on to sewing all of the Black Friday patterns I bought for myself. Um, and I was kind of waiting until I finished <laughs> sewing gifts and before I could do that. So that kind of got me through. God, Amanda, you're such an overachiever. That's a good yeah. tool for <laughs> first time ever. Yeah. <sighs> That's like a, I'm gonna use that yeah. like tool in the future. I can't sew that until I finish. You know, X, yeah, Y, and Z. It works. That's great. So, yeah, motivation. Well, I'm more on the Meg side of things. I'm. Uh, I'm sitting there thinking about it. I've got, I don't know, like 40 presents I need to wrap or something. And I need to make some of them before I can wrap oh. them. Um, and my husband, <laughs> oh, my husband loves to wrap presents. And he's very, very good and dedicated. And he's also very, very slow. Oh, he's he so, a perfectionist. Oh, no. yeah. He's a perfectionist. Mm-hmm. And he really likes to do work. just, he likes to do artwork with the ribbons and bows and stuff. I mean, oh, it is, it's, it's like art. But oh, there's wow. so much tape involved and so much time last Last night we were wrapping and I wrapped three things in the amount of time it took him to wrap one. And he kind of looked at me. He's like, wait, did mm. you finish everything else? And I'm like, yeah, 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 we're, we're good. Mm-hmm. Um, honey, I love you. You are the best. And I love your wrapping. But uh, I do end up taking a little bit more responsibility for that than he does. Yep. So. <laughs> all right, but by the time anyone hears this, all of that will be over. Mm-hmm. So let's jump in yeah. to the post-Christmas <laughs> stuff. So all three of us celebrate Christmas, obviously. But even for those of you who don't, I'm guessing it's a slow week for you anyway. That's why we decided to talk about loungewear today. From comfy t-shirts to fuzzy pajama pants, the end of the year is a great time to embrace self-care by wearing your most comfortable me maids. So, first of all, I want to ask you, do you guys sew a lot of loungewear? I do not, and I'm not really sure why. I am such I have such a focus on sewing basics, sewing things that I will actually wear, but for some reason that doesn't include loungewear. Even though I I wear it at home, I have a couple of pairs of ready-to-wear sweatpants and leggings and things like that. Um, I'm not a huge fancy pajama person, mm. um, but I but it is something that I just I don't I don't tend to sew a lot of. I think it's because I mostly wear it at home, and maybe I just want to you know parade my me maids out into the world all the time, but. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a good point. How about you, Meg? I do actually. I sew more so uh, pajamas, but for me, like those are interchangeable mm-hmm. pajamas and and loungewear. Oh, yeah. But I realized when I was, um, yeah, preparing for this episode, I sew a lot of like robe, like like layering uh, type pieces. Mm-hmm. I've sewn several robes and uh, like slips and stuff like that. I like to sew. Um, 
and wear that. So yeah, I do actually. Yeah, and I sew a lot of loungewear for other people as well. I know last year, um, one of my gifts to because I pick one thing and I make it. So for all like the the men in the family, I sewed kind of lounge pants and some like Shannon fabrics, cuddle mm. like oh so warm fabric. Um, and I know you've and I sew uh, Julian. Lots of loungewear too. Yeah, I yeah. know you've mentioned you've sewn you've sewn Julian a lot of uh, sleep shorts. Um. Yeah, oh, I'm still I'm staring at the uh, the onesie fabric that I still need to make for myself. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> he still wants his his giant onesie, so I need to. Uh, so that's, I think onesies count yeah, as maybe that'll be my so do. <laughs> I think onesies count as loungewear, oh. right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely, definitely. Oh, and yeah. And I was gonna say, mm-hmm. even though this is coming out after Christmas, I do think loungewear is a great makes a great gift. Oh, I agree. Um, because so cozy. Oh. Totally. You know, oftentimes fitting isn't a super big issue. Um, so, yeah, for anybody who mm-hmm. wants to think about next year. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. And there's always something about every year, just like that new pair of like pajamas exactly. or loungewear that you wear. Yes. Or Yeah, it's, you know, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I, I myself, cut you off there, I'm, Kate. I'm, <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm. I'm like Amanda. I actually, when I stop and I think about it, I'm like, wow, I really don't sew a lot of loungewear. And I think it is, it's when I sew something, I generally want it to be something that I can wear to work. Um, And so Mm. usually loungewear doesn't really fall in that same category. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, for me, that's interchangeable. (laughs) (laughs) We're close enough. That's true. It's like, why don't I just live in just one onesie forever? (laughs) That's true. Well, I do get to work from home sometimes. And, you know, I I often go for my uh, me-made leggings when that happens. Um, But then I usually layer other things on the top. Um, though I do on occasion where like when I get home at the end of the night and I take off my work clothes, I will often leave on, um, some of my more comfortable tops and just not take them off until I'm ready to go to bed. Yeah. Um, but it depends on the top. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as, even if I do go out and I'm wearing like jeans or something, as soon as I get home, I can't like lounge in like real clothes. I just, I can't. Oh, no, no one wants to wear jeans around <laughs> at the all. house. I mean, come on. Except my, my brother actually does. He, it's, it anno- I know it annoys his girlfriend so much. <laughs> She's like, like, why do you, why are you sitting on the couch with your jeans on? She goes, it makes me uncomfortable <laughs> just looking at you. <laughs> Maybe men's jeans are more comfortable than women's jeans. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So I so Amanda and I don't really Meg you do what are the reasons to sew loungewear as we stop and think about that I mean it's kind of like what we were just talking about it's yeah. the stuff that you actually wear and spend a lot of time in mm-hmm. yeah um so I and mm-hmm. you know for me I feel like some of those loungewear pieces kind of cross into um, the athletic wear area, yep. you know, like a, cu- yeah, a couple sure. of my favorite loungewear patterns are kind of sporty sweatshirt type things, which would totally be good for mm-hmm. hiking and things like that. And there too, I'm kind of, I just, I don't put a lot of energy there. Yeah. But I, I, it, in my mind, it, in the practical sense of things, it makes so much sense. I just don't do it. <laughs> and, well, you know, part of my, part of my thing is I think, just as I'm, we're sitting here talking about it, this popped in my head. I'm not super confident in my ability to make all of my clothing very comfortable. I mean, patterns I've done a lot of times, mm. sure. Mm. But, you know, if I'm picking up like a pajama bottom pattern, I'm always sitting here like, what is going to be wrong with the crotch on this thing? Mm. And so I I think that part of it is I don't want to risk making myself something that's supposed to be comfortable and isn't. Mm. Um, you can see that. And so uh, I just kind of avoid it. Is that weird? Hmm. No. No, it's totally, like, do you think it's totally understandable? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, then you're just reminded of, like, how it doesn't work every time you're in it. You're like, ah. Right. <laughs> and you're sitting there. Because <laughs> if it's supposed to be something that. <laughs> this is supposed to make me feel good, but it doesn't. Yeah, I love <laughs> loungewear fabrics. Like we were talking about flannel and French terry. Oh, like they're yeah. my favorite. But um, I, I think that I start to feel kind of precious about them. I mean, I 
feel pretty precious about all my fabric. <laughs> but um, I had some flannel earlier this year, and I've got some really nice fleeced back um, sweatshirt fabric that I should probably sew into sweatband- sweatpants because I would totally wear them. But I'm also like, ooh, maybe I want a, another sweatshirt dress, you know, which is kind of impractical and would totally not get as much wear. But I just can't stand the thought mm-hmm. of using that fabric for loungy pants. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've just been... Um I think I sent Amanda you a picture of this, but I just want to like what got I, I me like totally like loungewear inspired. And now I it, when kind of loungewear goes into fashion is uh, Skims. I don't know if you're familiar with that brand. It's a new brand by uh, Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. It was shapewear. And then she's moved into a loungewear and her new loungewear collection. I mean, it sold out in like literally <laughs> minutes. I was even on the waiting. I wasn't going to buy anything, but I was just, I, I just wanted to see what it, when it released, but it's just, it's so cool. It's like this matching set of like fuzzy mm-hmm. fabrics of like a cool, like they're like, they're lounge pants, but they're still like fashionable. They're like high waisted and they kind of flare out and there's a matching cardigan and tank top. And oh, I, that's, I'm totally wanting to make something similar to that because yeah, it's like when, loungewear it's becomes fashion it's really cool and i just it looks so comfy <laughs> now, were those so were i'm those, on the search for patterns mm-hmm. were those sherpa or did it just look like sherpa? it looked like it yeah. i think yeah, it i think look yeah i i'm not sure i need to yeah look into that a little bit more but it looks like it yeah i feel like that's one of the the best the the things that might be a little bit more inspiring for me is something that that can be worn as a lounging thing, but also conceivably could go out into the mm-hmm. real world. Um, I bought a pair of um, – they're pretty much lounging pants. Um, probably technically they're exercise pants that I wore on the plane to mm-hmm. Vienna because they were super, super comfortable and super soft and did not give me any sort of lines or uncomf- discomfort or anything like that. Um, And while those were store bought, something like that, that I could, you know, you know, throw on and wear at least out to the to get my bagel in the morning or whatever. I could see that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm looking it up and it was it says it's engineered with a soft, cozy boucle yarn. Mm -hmm. So it's like a a sweater knit type. Mm -hmm. uh, So kind of more like a teddy bear type thing. Yeah. 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 Oh, now I'm just looking at it. I'm like, I want it. (laughs) But I can, but the silhouettes are then so, like, that's another thing why I like sewing loungewear. It's the silhouettes are pretty simple. There's, they're pretty easy to come together. And yeah, you don't have to worry about fit too. I usually always go um, up a size as well when I'm doing a lounge. I like a really baggy, um, I know, not, too into to anything too too fitted so even if I were to recreate this look I would kind of have it a little bit more looser fitting but yeah yeah and they're just easy yeah totally easy to sew um and then when you stick to a pattern that you like I always make sure I I keep it and then I always like refer back to to that pattern when I want something new. I don't really try a lot of new loungewear. I just like always go back to to my basics. I think I have a pair of, oh, I think they're leggings. Um, and yeah, I've cut them out like so many times. I need to re-retrace <laughs> them because they have, you know, the pinholes right. in them. Like, I so, have a few like, like that. Even uh, through the paper, they just, oh. And I think they were not even a, uh, they're just so long ago. I think I even just like self-drafted like a manipulation of a, of a pattern I had like maybe 10 years ago or something. I couldn't even like trace it back to a brand. <laughs> they're just, <laughs> they're just like a like shape. <laughs> yeah. Right. Eh? <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, Amanda brought up her um, flannel, her love of flannel and French terry. And then we talked about the boucle a little bit. What uh, other fabrics do you guys love for loungewear? I actually really like um, Shannon Fabrics Silky Satin um, because mm. uh, I've made a, a robe in that and a slip and I've gone on to making uh, made some pants and stuff because my uh, my loft runs the, 
we can't control our own heat and it runs hot. So I can't really wear like I save all my cozy clothes uh, when I go home for the holidays and when I visit uh, my parents' house. But here it's like I can't wear all my cozy stuff because I get too mm-hmm. hot. And so that I find that it's it's super slinky and cool and it just like feels so nice on my skin. Um, so I like that for, for some loungewear. That sounds lovely. Amanda? Um, Anything yeah. other than the ones you've already <laughs> yeah. mentioned? I think um, I will say I've made a couple tops recently with ribbing, like a rib knit, um, and I Ooh, really I love, love a rib that. knit. It's just it's so stretchy, and I mean you can obviously make it um, pretty fitted if you want to. It's pretty much designed for that, but um, I don't know. It's just really forgiving and really comfortable. Yeah. And it's really on trend right now. You, it, I would go into the fancy stores and you see rib knit yeah. tanks and stuff all over. And they're expensive. Mm. They're really in mm. right. That, that uh, yeah, that rib knit look is uh, maybe it's so cool. It's, maybe it's part of the kind of 90s trend because I feel like that was totally. a 90s thing as well. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. yeah totally. Like a tank, like a turtle knit exactly. tank. Oh, oh, now I want to make one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I have to say, for me, I want knits. Just yeah, in general, um, wovens. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't want anything that's going to fight my body. I just want everything moving exactly with me for lounge no. wear. Um, I want it to stretch with yes, me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Not against exactly. Me. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want my fab, my oh. lounge wear fabric to fight me. Um, so obviously, yeah. I I love a good cotton spandex knit. Um, I'll use those for whatever. Um, I've also come up with, I've been using a rayon knit that I think comes from Stylish Fabric. Um, and they have a whole bunch of different weights of it from a very lightweight to heavier weights. And um, it's really soft and silky and it's just, and it drapes and it kind of, not exactly clings, it kind of flows off of you and it's super comfortable and I love that stuff. So definitely whenever I wear mm-hmm. anything made out of it, I feel like I'm wearing loungewear, even if I'm not. <laughs> mm-hmm. right i know i love i now i just want to go to the fabric store right now because loungewear fabric shopping is so fun because it's just all about you just like yeah, cozy exactly. and you pet everything <laughs> and then you like wrap it around and like <laughs> and you smell it even too. <laughs> do you well you don't you don't want a fabric no. that you're gonna lounge I around always smell in. my fabrics <laughs> yeah you don't want it to smell funny if it smells right. funny you don't want it to be loungewear I mean, i'm gonna wash it are you yeah. <laughs> I mean, I am. <laughs> Are you really? Most, most. <laughs> I swear we've had this discussion before. Anyway. No, we've definitely had the pre-washing oh, yeah. <laughs> conversation before. All right. Well, oh, moving on geez. from that awkward moment, let's see. How about favorite patterns? <laughs> what do you guys, who, what, what patterns do you guys like? Meg, you said you have a whole collection um, and some of them are sort of self-drafted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of them are self-drafted, but I have, I've made two robe patterns and they're both Berta Mm -hmm. style. uh, And one is actually a kimono pattern that I sewed in the silky satin. It was actually my wedding getting ready robe, but I like, I wore it like all day yesterday. It was, so I've been wearing it a lot. Uh, And yeah, so it's the kimono pattern. It's number 106 from the uh, April 2019 issue. And then there's another uh, robe pattern that I, it's my more cozy one. I made it in a cuddle fabric. And that one is number 106 from the February 2012 issue. So those are my two kind of go-to robe-ish patterns. Um, I like the kimono one because it's super easy. It doesn't, the other one has like more of a shawl collar and you need to sew a Mm -hmm. facing. The kimono is more, it's it's really simple and it has like side slits and the drawstring is it's it's um like the waist high I like it because I'm I'm so annoyed with the loops at the side because my belts always come out of the loop and it's so <laughs> annoying <laughs> so the kimono pattern it's like a, a casing that it's so it's just a rectangle that you just sew right on the only the back piece and so it's threaded through there so it never comes comes out and so that's what i i really like about awesome. that awesome i'm gonna have to check that one out How yeah you, Amanda? what do you like to so sure i have um i've made one pair of hudson pants by true bias mm-hmm. and i really love those i don't know why i haven't sewn another pair and there's also i think there's a version for men and also a version for kids um it's kind of a it's a nice jogger, um, like a little bit more of a slim fit 
than a true sweatpant. <clears throat> I also really love the London sweatshirt by Grainline Studio. I think at one point this was Ooh. the pattern I had made the most of, and now that's, I think I'm, um, there are other ones that have taken its place, but I love that sweatshirt. It's just kind of big and boxy and super fun to hack. Um, yeah, I, I thought that one was going to come up. Yeah, it's it's so good. Um, and you've made that one into a dress, I have. right? Am I? And it's, um, it's so funny yeah. because I feel like even though those are sweatshirts, they're like my going out sweatshirts. <laughs> I don't know if other people <laughs> oh have that. Oh, my God. Um, but I... Only Amanda would have going I mean, out sweatshirts. I mean, like my nicer sweatshirts that I don't actually want to wear, like hanging out around the house. Oh my gosh. They're like, I've made some in um, like cool ponty, cool <laughs> kind of textured knits with like a contrast um, raglan sleeve. So they're like, I don't know. Yeah, they're my going out sweatshirts. Um, I also. Oh, I love that. I mean, That's yeah, so yeah. Um, I also love the Halifax hoodie by Hey June Handmade. It's um, it's got a really nice cowl neck on it. And again, I think if you did it in the right fabric, it'd be worthy of going out. <laughs> or if you did it in the right fabric, it would be worthy of staying. Stay in. home. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what is the right fabric for loungewear. I, I mean, it's, I think you get to choose. Yeah, whatever makes you happy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's because it's so something that you. It's like an extended wear mm -hmm. thing, right? It's, um, yeah. So it's yeah, up to you. Well, as for me, but yeah, definitely. Well, in my case, definitely mm -hmm. knit. Yeah, that's definitely we knit. Well, as for me, I love my Loveland leggings. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of those. I have a couple pairs of them that just because of the fabric they're made out of do not get worn outside the house um, simply because they're horizontal prints and mm. just not something I want people seeing making my legs look any, every even bigger. So they'll stay at home, but they're comfy and I like to lounge around in them, especially if I'm working from home. Um, my husband, I made a sage tea earlier this year. Um, that's by LB Patterns. And he loves that thing. He wore that thing on the plane on our way to Vienna and on our biggest traveling day once we were in Vienna. Um, so I say that is a pretty good and comfy pattern. I also, uh -huh. I mentioned earlier uh -huh. that um, there are certain things that I will uh, leave on when I get home from work um, because they're comfortable enough. And that's my gallery tunics, my beloved, beloved gallery tunics. That's what I leave on. So those are my favorite nice. loungy, loungy patterns. Good ones. Yes, I'm yeah. pleased with them. All, All right. right. What mm -hmm. else do we have to and say? I will just say something about... I just want to say one more thing about loungewear. I know we've talked about um, this when it kind of comes to swimwear as well. It, it's it's an area that I know there's like lots of inexpensive loungewear mm -hmm. out, out there, but one, you know, loungewear that you really love, like the color and the style and the nice fabric. I think loungewear is a way to save money yeah. when you sew as well. Um, because uh, Julian and I were out yesterday and we popped into Lululemon <laughs> and there are like sweatpants for like $128. Uh, <laughs> and they're, but if you just like invest in that nicer fabric, like that's where the yeah. money is. Mm -hmm. And so you can get a really nice fabric and sew a nice quality loungewear that's going to be really wearable and comfy and stylish for, for less money. Cause you know, I just, it's so crazy just to think of like a hundred dollars sweatpants, yeah. but you know, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Save that's money. A really good point. <laughs> I should definitely do it more. Yeah, yeah, me too. I just I, thought of I, I didn't think of that until yeah. just now. I've been mm -hmm. handling a lot of fleece lately for reasons I will not go into. Although by the time this drops, it'll be fine. But um, I kind of am sitting here thinking maybe I need a little bit more fleece and yeah. some fleece pajama pants. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's take a quick break and then let's come back and review our year. Nice. Have you heard of my MySonet from Husqvarna Viking? It's a group of cloud-based apps and services designed to support your sewing and creativity. They call it an ecosystem. The MySonet ecosystem includes live machine updates and the power to transfer your favorite embroidery designs from your phone and computer to Wi-Fi enabled machines like their newest sewing and embroidery machine, the Designer Epic 2. Anywhere, anytime. One of many features that makes MySonet so unique is the MySo Monitor app 
which notifies you when it is time to change thread color or lets you know if your thread breaks. And if you don't have embroidery, MySewNet allows you to save customized stitch combinations directly from your sewing machine to the cloud. It also notifies you when a new project gets uploaded to the site, and there are a bunch of fabulous projects you can download for free. Simply go to huskvarnaviking.com to explore. Huskvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing. So I am a total sucker for a good year in review. Both on a personal and professional level, I think it's super important and fun to take a look back on the year. Um, so let's jump in, you guys. Let's do it. Um, favorite podcast episode. Meg, you're up. Well, I'm a little biased, so I'm gonna, I couldn't choose between both of the Mimi G episodes. I mean, mm-hmm. they were just so much fun. And yes. they were kind of, you know, about weddings, and it was just my year of all things wedding. So both those, but the first one was really funny and fun. That just kind of like of planning fun. and talking, planning everything out and everything. So, but both of them were, were really fun. So definitely, so good. definitely my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Kate? You know, I had to go back and, and look over the whole list and try to figure out what really s- jumped out at me because I've really loved most of the episodes we've done this year. But the one that kind of stuck out was uh, one of the earlier ones this year where we talked about the sewing slump, what mm, you do when you mm-hmm. lose your inspiration. And, ah, um, I forgot about that one. Yeah, that's number so eight if anybody wants to go and find it. Um, and I just – I really liked – being able to talk about that because I feel like sometimes here on the podcast, we have a little bit of a face that we have to keep on about our constant inspiration and our constant yeah. um, work, sewing and all of that. And and I really liked being able to stop and say, look, this happens to absolutely everybody. And if you have moments when you're not feeling inspired, that's OK. Everybody does. And here are some ways to maybe get over it. And here are some ways that maybe you don't have to worry about getting over it. And I really enjoyed that one. Oh, that's a good one. I forgot about it. Um, I didn't I couldn't choose between two either. Um so I'm just going to have two. Um, I really loved our So Body Positive episode. Mm, me too. I think yeah. That was a runner up it for was me. Just, it was juicy. <laughs> it was raw. I felt like we all shared on a level on this podcast that, you know, we, we sometimes get to, but that one felt kind of deep. Mm-hmm. And I also feel yeah. like the response that we got there was, it was just clear that we had really hit a nerve with people and... People were glad we were talking about it. Um, Mm -hmm. I also really loved, I can't remember what it was called. I should have done my research, but I'll I'll link it in the show notes. Um, The episode that we did covering um, swimsuits and sewing spandex. um, I think it was jump into sewing swimsuits. That one? I think that was a punny one. (laughs) That one made me sew a swimsuit. So, I mean, that happens all the time. Oh my gosh, yeah. We we record episodes and... I get really inspired, but that one was like episode sew a swimsuit. So that one almost inspired me to sew a swimsuit maybe next year. <laughs> that counts. <laughs> but I like that one too. I thought that I thought that was it was it was it was very inspiring. Yeah. It, and it did make me feel like I could approach this thing that was kind of scary. Right, right. All right. Moving over. Um Favorite article in Sew News or Creative Machine Embroidery? You 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 first, Kate. Oh, you didn't tell me I could go for a CME yeah. too. Um, so I looked at Sew News. Um, I hope you. I hope that the article also includes projects because I did yeah, pick sure. a project. Um, in our April May issue, there was a bag we called the linen and leather bag. Um, which was actually a very simple bag, but it had this um, cool ruffle, um, like a curved curved ruffle in a very thin leather um, that went around Mm -hmm. the edge. And I just thought it was so pretty. And um, I will admit I didn't actually make one, but it was probably the closest I came to making something from our uh, magazine. Because, you know, by the time you're done editing the stories, you're like, I never want to see this again. But by the time I was done editing (laughs) that one, I was like, I totally want to make this. So... I love that one too. I think part of it was the the tone on tone kind mm-hmm. of effect with yeah. the with the leather and the linen, um, two things that you just don't think about going together. But no, but really oh, they looked pretty. really good. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, so look that one up. I think do we have that in the store? I think we do. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Check that one out if you haven't ever seen it because it is really mm-hmm. pretty. 
Um, we'll put it yeah, in the show notes, too. Yeah, I just pulled up the, the issue on my computer, and I'm looking at it now, and it's so cute. Right? So cute. Mm-hmm. All right. Meg, do you have a favorite article or project? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of have one of each. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. well, I kind of re- reflected back on um, the projects that I made and kind of picking my favorite. And out of my pattern plays, um, and it's the one that I like... I took back and I actually wear myself. It's the bodysuit blouse and I just love it so much. (laughs) It's just so fun and comfortable and I I can, you know, just not have to worry about my blouse untucking and I just, I just love it. And I love like the fabric that I chose. It's just like that nice, it's, I don't know, it's like 80s a little bit and I just love it. So that was definitely my favorite project that I made and it's definitely the thing I've I've made for pattern play that I've taken back and worn the most. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I also re- lounge in it, guys. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you you really good. Do you, do you remember I which... I know. It's definitely comfy enough to do that. <laughs> do you remember which issue it was in, Meg? Pardon? I, oh. Do you remember uh, what it issue was it was in? in? Oh, I wrote down my, the other ones. Um, I'll find out and click it in the show oh, yeah, notes. We'll put I'm it in the show sure. notes. It's August, September. You think so? I think yeah. it was August, September. Yeah. yeah. It was definitely August, September. Um, yes. Yes, I think yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. And then my favorite series was actually, well, it was a series. So it was the Sustainable Sewing Series that started mm-hmm. in the February, March. And I just thought it was just really informative and just kind of made me, th- and, you know, it's actually learning about different um, different types of, you know, fabric um how it's made up and how it impacts the environment and just being more con i just liked it was a really great three-part series with different themes you know mindful making and then uh, the fabric impact so i really that was um a really great read uh on that i did so i liked that that is, that was a good series really i was. forgot about that one yeah. as well it feels like it was maybe two years ago, but <laughs> it wasn't. No, oh, right, because you guys probably started working on this because it exactly. came out earlier exactly. in the year, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I, yeah, I was I was going through specifically the magazines from this year, trying to remember what actually ended I up know. fitting in this year. It's hard to hard to keep track of them all. Um, I am a super big fan of the Common Thread series mm-hmm. that we have in oh, yeah. right now. Um, and the series is really kind of all about just sharing different and varied perspectives from within the sewing community and a variety of different angles. But I really loved um, the recent piece with the socialists. Um, sewing is for mm-hmm. everyone. That one is in yeah. the October, November issue. And I just I love it. I mean, I think the series in general has brought a lot of depth to the magazine and really made me consider um, things from multiple angles and just kind of ponder sewing on yeah. a deeper level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I am also a super big fan of um, the change that we made to our sew alongs this year, um, having the video component and the free pattern and kind of um, a, a little community springing up out of that has been super fun. And again, just been a new level of interaction um, that I have really loved and has been really inspiring and has made up a huge part of what I made this year, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I hadn't I hadn't really considered that, but I agree with you. I, I love the new so, so long format and um, I'm actually really excited because it looks like we're going to keep doing this format throughout the next year. Yep. And so that's really exciting, too. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know if I was allowed to tell, but I no, did anyway. I think so. We're gonna. It's it's been a good thing. We're gonna keep on with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's talk favorite project or proudest make. So they're kind of related, um, and I think they overlap. And I'm gonna kick us off. Um, I'm gonna start on the kind of professional level. Um, but the capsule studio collection that we put together, I was oh, yeah. super proud of. It was yeah. on a really tight timeline. There was a really, you know, specific vision for it. Um, the designers were awesome, and the whole thing, I think, really ended up being what it was supposed to be. And I'm just, I'm super proud of it. Um, and then. And for favorite project on the on the personal side, I would say that um, my Zadie jumpsuits are probably my most proud oh. moment. Um, yeah, and they were definitely inspired by 
the versions that are in our December, January issue by Pauline Bruce. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, for a number of reasons, I didn't really think that I was, well, let's, let's just be honest here. I am, have been a jumpsuit hater in the past. <laughs> so making that, you know, I really resisted for a long time, finally did it. And, um, love them so much. Super comfortable. Yeah. You feel super put together. You could probably lounge in the thing. They're, they are super oh, comfortable. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So I think that I, it's, I'm proud because not that it is a super technical make, but I, that I really kind of went outside my comfort zone, um, which I think is something to be celebrated. How about you, Kate? Nice. All right. Well, I hadn't really thought on the professional level, but as you were talking, it, it was right there. Um, it's not it's not a complicated it's not something that i'm like super uh that that like took huge amounts of effort or anything but the um wool coat the uh copper copper mountain wool coat that so long's going on right now and the one that um amanda and i kind of co-made in the video um i only got a chance to wear it for like a week and a half before the weather really turned and it was too uh too lightweight for the weather, but I got a compliment. I swear every time I wore that out. Nice. And somebody was always telling me they wanted to make it for somebody because yeah. it is really, really classy. It looks really nice and it's not yeah. very complicated. But I'm also proud yeah, of it. I just, be- yeah. I'm also proud of it. I was going to say, I, I just printed it out on Friday. It's nice. A- <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah. I'm also really proud of it because I did um, teach how to make bound buttonholes in that oh, man. Um, in that Kudos. video, oh, wow. and that was really stressful for me. <laughs> Amanda kept being like, "Oh, you're the expert in this," and I'm like, oh, "I know how to do this. I don't know that I'd say I'm yeah, the expert." Yeah, you did great though. Um, so I was really proud of accomplishing that on video without just messing it up entirely. So. Um, on the personal level, I have to say I am really, really in love with my abstract tote that I made from Little Moo Designs this year. Um, it has uh, shiny rainbow cork fabric, and I also embroidered the front pocket, and the piping looks really good, and I just I just like making bags that fit me and my way of living that that work for me and have exactly what I want. Um, I love doing that. And I think this one turned out really, really well. Ironically, I started, I I took a different purse to Vienna and I haven't switched back yet. Mm -hmm. So I haven't actually used it since October. But um, I just look back on it with a lot of fondness. Um, And also one of my Vienna makes, I'm sorry, I'm just rambling now. One of my Vienna makes was the Afternoon Tea Blouse by Liesl and Company. And um, that has an inset piece of lace. And I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go together, but uh, uh, Liesl writes really good instructions. And Mm -hmm. it just went together perfectly. And I really like it. Um, Again, I haven't worn it very much because it's not really weather appropriate right now, but I'm really looking forward to the spring when I can pull that back out. So pretty. Thank you. I love that one. Nice. How about you, Meg? Well, I mean, I think I'd have to say my wedding look. Yeah, I guess you would have to say that, wouldn't you? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I just, oh, I just love it so much. And I'm just so happy with how it turned out. It was funny. My dad was over this past uh, weekend. He had to pop up to Toronto to pick up something for work and he stayed over and we were going through wedding pictures because I printed some out and it was a picture of us like uh, doing, you know, the dances. And he's like, oh, was your jumpsuit open at the back? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I didn't even notice that. (laughs) You didn't notice like a key part of like my, uh, that just shows you how much fun everybody had. Yes. <laughs> yeah it was just just reminded me yeah so that definitely my proudest and favorite favorite make of the year and probably for the you know yeah <laughs> ever yeah exactly. right right but It'll next be- year we can mm-hmm. ask you for next year's answer and yeah you didn't make it no next I know year, so I know yeah. <laughs> yeah. all right um jumping over to favorite hashtag and Meg why don't you kick us off Actually, yeah, it was uh, my favorite hashtag was um, it was the first year I really 
participated uh, like fully and actually, you know, did and you know took time and um, uh, did like an Instagram challenge. So the uh, BP Sovember, uh, mm-hmm. I I just I liked that one because it just inspired me to just I don't know reflect back and reflect on my sewing space and my makes and my plans and post more on social media. I, I go through like lulls sometimes, uh, but it just kind of got me to um so that was my favorite uh hashtag of the year i thought for sure you were gonna say pose like the pattern cover i know that is that was i know i just feel like i couldn't because i didn't do it yeah i still have time to do it i really do do want to do it so um i think i will so but definitely that was like my favorite but i I felt like i couldn't say it because i didn't participate in it but that was just that's just me (laughs) what about you kate um obviously hashtag pattern weight i mean oh yeah 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 i mean that's a fun one i also really do enjoy um dress like a crayon Mm -hmm. um that one's pretty fun oh yeah and if i can Mm -hmm. have a non-sewing related theater geek moment um there's burr's corner which is um when hamilton actors uh get on instagram do little videos about what lyrics they just messed up in that very wordy wordy show um and it's really fun if you happen to like um, musicals or Hamilton specifically, check out Burst Corner if you've never seen it before. It's it's hilarious. Awesome. How um, about you, Amanda? I had dressed like a crayon on my list as oh, well. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah, that's so fun. Um, just because I think it was, I don't know, I definitely get into the, just my typical combinations of things that I wear. And I just thought that was like, so fun and lighthearted and I should probably do it. Um, But uh, also, I mean, I just love, I still love So Frosting, um, and I love how it's kind of evolved over the years. Um, And I I just love seeing people in their fancy makes feeling fancy. (laughs) And it's it's always uh, just a super inspiring challenge. Um, One that has kind of um, bubbled up recently for me as well is the measurements movement. And sorry, it's hashtag measurements movement. Um, And it was started by um, minimalist machinist. And I'll link over to her in the show notes. But um, basically, it's it kind of took the Instagram sewing world by storm in the past few weeks. And it's people are sharing their measurements in their profile. And I think that people could have you could have mixed feelings about it. But it's really oh, it's really an educational resource since you see things on people on Instagram and you don't often have any sense of scale. It's kind of nice to to have that um, bit of information, especially for people who are new to sewing and, um, you know, being able to see so many different patterns in different fabrics on different bodies and knowing kind of where you are in relation to the body that you're looking at. Um, I think it's really awesome. There's also kind of a sub hashtag under that where it's there's a special formatting, but you you use your measurements as a hashtag so you can find body buddies, which I think is kind of awesome. That I is love kind that of awesome. term. That's so and, you know, cute. You talk, like you can get pretty technical, you know, like what it, how did you alter this pattern? And, um, you know, mm-hmm. and I, again, I think it's in the spirit of education and information sharing. Yeah. Obviously, I think people are going to have um, different feelings about that, but I'm definitely all for kind of putting it mm-hmm. all out there. So um, yeah. I think it's been a good thing. And I, yeah, and I always like to, um, yeah, when I make something, I'm always very, I think it's helpful to just say what size that I've made yeah, and exactly. any like change. And because it's just, it's super helpful. I know people a lot, uh, appreciate that a lot. And I do think it's, yeah. And right. I also I going when I was just looking at the skims um, to online, I like how um, they use like different um, size models and nice. really great. But they mm-hmm. actually tell you which size the model is wearing. And I thought that's so great for online shopping because yeah. oftentimes you're like, how does that fit? So it's 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 a very visual thing. Um, and so I just thought that was cool, too. So, it's so yeah, cool. Very cool. I think my my biggest revelation about that hashtag has been. That I'm super short. <laughs> Amanda, and, we already knew that. I know. <laughs> but I, I will always, you'll just, you'll read people's measurements and just be like, I had no idea they were so tall. Um, yeah. Or, hey, they are almost, you know, my exact height. And I just love that 
because it, it really is true. I think that was the height thing for me is really when having a no sense of scale on Instagram is really kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Let's let's hop over to biggest fail or learning moment. And Kate, can you can you start us off? I can. I can. Um, so I thought about it a little bit. And of course, I think probably my biggest sewing fail was my failure to actually make a pants sloper this year. But I'm not going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about one of the um, pieces I made for my Vienna wardrobe. It was a boat neck top. And I had the brilliant idea to make it in a uh, knit instead of a woven for extra comfort. Um, I don't even think that was a bad idea, but I didn't adjust anything when I did that. Um, I, you know, cut out the exact same size. I didn't reduce any size for ease. Um, and it did not fit well. The um, the boat neck top ended up being so wide that it mm. was sliding off of one or both of my shoulders pretty much all the time. Mm. Um I, in the end, while I was in Vienna, took a hand sewing kit and closed up part of the sleeve, but then I had some kind of weird wing horn things going on in my shoulders. So I could only wear it when I had a cardigan over it to hide the mess that the shoulders were. Um, And so it was not my best make and definitely not not learning, but reminding me that you can't translate knits and wovens directly between each other without any adjustment because it does not work. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was the one that really like hurt. <laughs> yeah. Yep. What about mm-hmm. you, Meg? Um, well, I had I made like I was thinking my biggest like failure project that I was I just threw out (laughs) I just it was like I made a trench coat earlier in the year and it just did not work and it was just more frustrating because sometimes when things don't work and it's like a quick little project you're like oh oh well but it it, it spent so much time sewing and I just it just didn't work and I hated it and then you know dog pee got on it and that was just a sign (laughs) yeah and I don't know it was uh yeah it was a sign that you should just give up on it yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, but then my, I'm just so, I had so much, so many plans to like re-sew it, but I haven't yet. You know, it's just, I don't know. But, but then I've been taking, uh, I'm, I made something last week and I just, I, I guess not a learning moment, but just something I've been doing more instead of instead of just like giving up halfway through, not finishing it, I was m- making it a, um, a quick top. I was, had like a, an event that weekend. I just thought, oh, I had this red velvet scrap. And so I was, I was going to whip up like a little a little top with an off the shoulder and I just cut it and I just put it on and it just was horrendous. Like looking on, <laughs> it just didn't fit. Like I, because I, I didn't even use a pattern. I just cut a bunch of rectangles and surged it together. But then I thought, no, I'm going to finish it because I know my one friend will love this and it'll fit her. So then I just finished it and now I have a gift for them. So nice. that's something I've just been doing doing more. It's just don't, you know, someone else can can take it or finish it and then donate it. I've yeah. been, um, you can do that as well. Uh, if it's like a fit if you, issue, if it's, you know, if it just comes out like ugly or you just, yeah, really mess it up, then I, then I would just salvage the fabric from it. So, but yeah, I don't know. I would yeah. say for me, I, I definitely had my fair share of, this one always gets me when I make something in French terry, that is not quite stretchy enough for what I'm making. And then it ends up being a little bit oh. restrictive. Like I do that all the time. Um, uh. But I will say, I don't think I had super big um, dramatic fails this year, but I also don't think I took a whole lot of risks. Mm. I made a lot of yeah. things over again. And um, I mean, I did a decent amount of hacking, um, but it was all pretty safe. So, um, but I, I will say the, the learning moment from the year for me was pretty much sewing the Kotzlo, um, swimsuit by Megan Nielsen, pretty much the whole process mm-hmm. beginning to end, not really something I had a lot of experience with. And I mean, I love that about sewing because you can, you can have sewn for forever and then, but there's still something to learn. And that was definitely one for me. And I thought for sure I was going to jump right in and make another one. Um, cause the one I made was 
more of just a wearable muslin. But I didn't. I've taken a really long break. I think I was <laughs> kind of over installing elastic. But next summer, I will. I will attempt to make another one for sure. Well, thank you so much nice. for sharing your look back. And it's been um, a good year. It's been a good year. It's been a long year. It's been yeah. a long year. It's been a busy year. Yeah, yeah, a lot of change. And um, but I will say, proudest make is doing this with you guys. Aww, um, oh, yeah. It's definitely yeah. on the list because I really, I really am proud of um, what we've created with this podcast. So yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Let's and it's basically, yeah, we've done it all oh. throughout 2019. It's crazy. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. We, we celebrated our year anniversary. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah so, yeah. so let's hop into our sojo. Yeah. And if, yeah. So what's giving us our sewing mojo this week? So, Kate, why don't you kick us off? Well, um, I'm going to refer back to our host check in at the beginning of the podcast. Um, I don't have time to sew right now. Um, if I have spare time, it needs to be either making presents or wrapping presents. Um, so that's right now. By the time this drops, I will be done with all of that, I hope. Oh, <laughs> dear God, I hope. Um, so I am looking forward to having the time to actually sew again. That That is, you know, get me through these next few days and... I will be, I will be free. Um, nice. So my sojo last time was the um, flannel Athena top that I stole the idea from for a man from Amanda, idea for from Amanda, and um, that is now cut out. And I'm sitting here like I don't have time to make this extremely simple top right now. So um, that's the first thing on the make yeah, list once I've got time you. again. Yeah. <laughs> Look for it when I get back after Christmas. Sounds good. Nice. What about you, Amanda? Um, I'd say my sojo is planning. Like I am definitely Ooh, thinking about yeah. 2020, thinking about really slowing my pace down and making some kind of larger scale, uh, more involved projects and really kind of focusing on finishing and construction techniques. Um, We'll see how that pans out. I feel like I say that every year and then I make a bunch of going out sweatshirts. (laughs) But (laughs) um, but I definitely, I I, have a list. Um, I know patterns are going to come out and distract me and I'm okay with that. But I do, I I am thinking about um, how I want to pace myself and where I want to be this time next year with, with what I've made. So... Yeah, I love this mode. <laughs> Planning mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Meg? Yeah. Um, well, I'm working on right now, I'm sewing uh, my mom a coat for the holidays. I think I might sew her the, uh, the what is it? The, the, the Copper the Mountain? Copper Copper Mountain. I knew it was Copper something. I know. I always tried to say Copper the, Tone. Mm-hmm. I was going to I was about to say Copper Town mm. for some reason. So, um, so yeah, I'm working uh, on that because she had, she was telling me um, a story, her, and I think it was on her honeymoon with my, with my dad many, many years ago. Uh, she bought this like golden wool coat in, in New York or mm. they were on a trip and moths got at it. Uh, so she had to get rid of it. And I, when we did the coat couture sew along that like golden Pendleton wool, I have just enough left over. I said, I can recreate that coat for you. And it was a similar silo- silhouette to the other one. So, um, yeah, cause she just wants it really simple. I'm going to add a zipper to it and maybe a little collar. So I'm working on that and I'm excited awesome. to, yeah, make something for my mom. Oh man. Yeah. If you do that, will you write up instructions and make a blog post? Oh, yeah, no, 100%. I would love yeah. to I I love the idea of putting a zipper in that coat. Oh yeah. Yeah, make it kind of mod. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Mhm. Yeah, I have a nice contrasting like uh navy cool. and gold uh zipper oh, that's yeah, gonna that be I'm going to so use. Good. So. Yeah. Woo. Oh, so yeah, let's go into our I was like, oh, I was just thinking about uh 
the coat. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> easy to get distracted. I forgot that we were doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes that's the best when we're just we're just chatting about what we're doing. Exactly. Uh, so we're jumping to our so and tell segment. And so last episode, we asked, what's on your wish list this holiday season? So we got some great responses um, on Instagram. So Kate, why don't, you, why don't you kick us off again? All right. I claimed this one as soon as I saw it. Um, it's on Instagram. C McCall 522 sews says, I'm actually hoping for the Star Wars sewing machine by brother. I did not know that this existed until I saw this. And the second I saw it, I Googled it. And I do not need a sewing machine. I don't. But man, I really want that machine. It is really cool. It's it's actually an embroidery machine, too. It's got built in um, designs. It's so cool. And I do not need it. But I hope that you got it. And I'm with you on yes, loving I, that. Yeah, I hope that they got it. Are too. the <laughs> embroidery designs Star Wars themed? Oh, yes. I'm sure that they have amazing. some general oh. ones, too. Yeah. yeah, they've got like a Darth Vader head and the Star Wars logo. And so good. Very cool. Um, oh, that's cool. On Instagram, we also heard from Lisa Poblins, um, who said, probably money to buy fabric so I can keep making things. I know some people think money is a cop out, but as someone who has never had much extra money for sewing supplies, that is my most wished for gift because it allows me to keep making things. It also makes me feel like my loved ones are actually listening to me when they ask what I want and then take my answer seriously. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I I ask for a gift card every year because I think I also think um, after the holidays, especially when I've spent too much money on gifts for my children, um, it looks like it's, you know, going to be a while before I can invest in fabric. So having that gift card is just it's like the perfect timing for it. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I loved that uh, yeah. response. I thought that was really great. Mm-hmm. So uh, there was another Instagram comment from Eileen Bartels, and they said, my mother-in-law and husband gave me a smocking pleater for Christmas one year. I absolutely love it and made so many handmade smo- uh, hand-smocked clothes for my children. And I think that's that so cute. Cool. What a you! It's kind of those things, uh, a perfect gift for the sewer who has everything, right. you know? Right. So because even the sewist was, who has uh, everything super- doesn't necessarily have a smocking yeah, pleater. Yeah, those are kind of hard to find, aren't yeah. they? I know. Cool. I thought that was so cool. Uh-huh. So I hope. Yeah. And so we. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I hope that everybody who responded to our question got what they were exactly. hoping for. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this episode, we're asking you guys, um, what was your greatest sewing accomplishment in 2019? So let us know on Instagram, email, just, yeah, let us know. And we could read yours next episode in 20. Yeah. No, our next episode is coming That's out right. in 2020, right? Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, the yes. one. Yeah. Yes, so this, it is. Yeah. <laughs> when we would be reading that. Yeah. Jeez, I get so confused. I know. I know. <laughs> Yeah, don't oh, be shy, everybody. Oh. Yeah. Give yourself a big old mm-hmm. pat on the back. Yeah, definitely. Don't don't uh, no 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 humility. Mm-hmm. Um, go with the bragging. Mm-hmm. We want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we definitely do. Well, thanks so mm-hmm. much, you guys. That was a fun episode. That was a fun episode. And it was a fun year. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a very fun year, and I'm about to go lounge until the new year. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sounds well. good. Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year. And happy stitching. Yeah. Until next time. Bye. For links to everything we talked about in this episode, go to our show notes page at sodaily.com slash sewandtell. If you want to get in touch with us, you can email us at sewandtellpodcast at goldenpeakmedia.com or visit us on Instagram at sewandtellpod. Answer the Sew and Tell question, tell us your sojo, or just leave us some feedback. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe on your podcasting platform of choice. And please leave us a review, ideally a good one, because that helps listeners like you find our podcast. And tell your sewing friends about us, too. Thanks for listening, and happy stitching. Sew and Tell is produced by Meg Healy, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Our consulting producer is Ron Doyle, and our executive producer is Jared Mayer. Jared Mayer.